Hey everybody, today we have a projector to look at. This was sent in by a viewer who needed some help with replacing a faulty DMD. The uh, symptoms were stars all over the screen, which is a pretty common symptom of a bad DMD. Um, they did provide the DMD and my job will be to install it and bring you guys along for the uh, for the trip. So let's open that up. I don't want to give away any personal info. Looking good, nice and wrapped up. Oh, that's cool. It's actually a good idea. You don't have a lot of bubble wrap. I think the uh, towel is definitely a worthwhile option. Move box and let's unwrap it here. Save the uh, bubble wrap. Oh, by the way, if um, totally unrelated, if you need a decent pocket knife, this Carshaw is pretty flipping sweet. I like the blade shape, it's like kind of a tonto, but not. Um, what I really like about it, there you go, it's a uh, 1365. What I really like about it is how thin it is. It fits in my pocket really nicely. So, you know, I think it was like 40 or 50 bucks on Amazon. So check it out if you need a, a decent, inexpensive VDC knife. Let's see, and this projector should be a Mitsubishi, is the new DMD. I see that the uh, owner bought it from a company I'm familiar with, which is good. Let's get this all out of the way, and then we'll take a look at Mr. Mitsubishi. So here we are. You can see it's an XD280U. This is a older yet really nice chassis. I've always been a fan of these. I don't believe this is native 1080, I think it's 720, but that's fine, you know, for presentations and stuff, which is what this is used for, that's perfect. Let's open the uh, DMD packaging and see what they sent along. Okay. Yep. It's one of these. It's a 6329. This is a common one. Now, there is some, there's a little bit of rust, but that's okay. Well, at least it should be okay. And if it was inexpensive enough, then that's fine. I mean, rust isn't going to hurt anything as long as it makes good connection. But there is an issue. I think I actually have one of these. And then I do have, uh, I do have one if the one he sent along will not work. Um, the part numbers are a little different, but I'm pretty sure these are compatible. Let's see. This is a 1076-6329, and this is an 8060-6318. Um, I think they, I think they're the same inside. Um, the pins are the same. I'm pretty sure the resolution is the same. I measured the uh, footprint of the mirrors, and they are the same. So I'll look it up. If uh, if these are the same or at least compatible, I'll put something on the screen. And if they're not, also put something on the screen. But I kind of think they are. So I'll put that off to the side. Let's go to Mr. Projector. Uh, first things first, let's open the lamp assembly area and make sure that that survived shipping happily. Let's get, let's get that. I want to fire it up first and just make sure. One thing I just noticed, I'm gonna hold that back, that back. One thing I just noticed is that the screws that these go into are not stripped inside. These two screw holes always get stripped out. People crank down on those screws and then just rip the threads up. This uh, lamp housing, lamp is in good shape. We're looking down inside. 
We're looking down inside here, and I'm looking around the base of the arc tube to see if there's any white deposits, and I don't see any. So even with the, you know, this definitely has some heat to it, it's still in good shape. Here's the, uh, that's the air gasket on the side for the cooling air to be forced in. And then the exhaust air comes out the back and comes out here. No, here and here. So that looks good. We have nothing rattling about. So that means we're going to reinstall the lamp assembly, reinstall the door. Wow, yeah, those screws go in so nicely. Really, really appreciate it when people take good care of their gear. All right, we'll snug that one down. I'm gonna leave that little uh, cover off for now. I just wanna make sure that the DMD is 100% the issue here. I, I don't see why it wouldn't be. The person I spoke to was pretty knowledgeable about what they were talking about, so. I, uh, I tend to believe them, but you know, let's just make sure in case it's something else so that maybe we can save them some hassle. There we go, it's turning on. And I'm just shining it at the wall. I already see something over here. Oof. Yeah, it looks like, yep. Let's get it a little focused, a little further back maybe. There we are. Oh yeah. Now you guys can see it a little better. Now that color scrolling is just you guys because of the uh, the uh, shutter rate of the camera and the color wheel. But see those little sparklies? Those are the mirrors turning on and off. Yeah, it's not really affecting it. So that's definitely bad. That's the uh, that's the corners of the DMD failing, probably from heat and age. The uh, original versions of these chips actually I think were prone for problems. I've heard a lot of these having to be replaced over the years, that particular model. So that confirms it. Oh, can't turn it off yet. Got to wait for it to finish warming up. So I'm going to let it uh, warm up and then shut it down. There we are. One more time. There we are. So now it's cooling down. Uh, I will have to remove the top next, but while it's cooling down, I can start by removing the uh, two screws on the back panel. The two chassis screws. That's these uh, flat machine screws here. Then there are two coarser threads, helical threads holding the RCA plugs for the audio and the video. There you are. So there's two of those. They come out. We'll probably have to take out the, um, the fasteners that hold the sub-D connectors into place, you know, for VGA and stuff. Now the uh, owner doesn't use VGA, he only uses HDMI, but we're still going to have to take the uh, connectors, you know, the fasteners out for those connectors. So, might as well do that now. I'm going to use a 5 millimeter nut driver to take those out. Now, when you're using a cordless driver, don't just jump on the trigger. Kind of bring it up a little bit and then go all the way because if you hit it too fast too hard sometimes you can just snap the heads off without unscrewing them so you're kind of breaking them loose getting them moving and then taking them out so those are out we'll still have to take that one out once the um once the top comes off I, oh that's right this comes off first i almost forgot all right so that's off now we'll take out the uh, HDMI connector screw, which again is another flat, um, flat, 
pan faced, you know, flat, uh, I don't want to call it a flat head, but like a flat faced Phillips screw with uh, machine threads. Just like the two that went on the side. Now, we need to take the lamp assembly out and then we'll take the fasteners out on the bottom. You don't need to take that out. That is a pseudo captured screw, so I'm going to put that back in. To the door because that is supposed to be, you know, supposed to be kind of loose like that. So that's good. So set the door over there and loosen up. There we are. Now there is a clip holding the lamp assembly in here, so you need to kind of just push back on the plastic a little until it starts to move, but there's also one on the back. We'll clear that one, so that's good. So now just the front, and then the whole thing comes up. And we'll just set the lamp assembly off to the side. Now we only need to get to the screws on the bottom. You know, I have to admit, I, I'm having a hard time getting over how good quality or good uh, condition, pardon me, how good a condition this is in. The uh, manufacturing date thought was listed on it somewhere, but I, I kind of believe it was around 2012, maybe even before that, but this projector is in beautiful shape, very well taken care of. We are one. Seems like I need to uh, renew the magnet on my screwdriver. It did not really grab any of those. Let's see. Screwdriver. Yeah, it looks like I'm just going to have to dump a few of them out. Okay. All right, one, two, and I think oh, is there one down here? Yeah. There we are. Let's see. Pardon me. Now the screws are out, so let's put the uh, drill over here, and do I can't remember if I need to take, I don't think I need to take that off, I think that will stay, yeah, so now we'll just gently come up, and there we go, there's no keyboard, just the top comes up nice and neatly, set that behind it, man, look how clean this thing is. I'll bet you the blower fan is even clean. A little bit of dust. I'll give it a, a quick squirt. But, 
you know, look at those fans. This thing's in great shape. Surprised that DMD failed. I guess it really is just a uh, problem part. So to get to the DMD, we need to get here. So main board has to come off, which is why we took all those fasteners out of the back. You know this stuff. So let's get these. Now these screws that hold this on, these are similar to the flat top screws that we saw before, but these have that uh, star washer on them. So star washer for the main board. And these two actually hold the uh, main board to the DMD DLP board. That's this board right here. So we're also going to disconnect that wire, the speaker wire. I will get it out from under. Well, once we pull the board out, we'll get it out from under there. Then I'm going to see how many of these I can leave in place. I am going to disconnect the door switch because I don't want to put any extra stress on the door switch. So let's see now if let's see, this screw has to come out flat. The machine screw. Up. And then we have a weird weird Phillips. A very small Phillips right here. Very small. Smaller than this will grab. Let me get my extra small Phillips. There we are. I'm going to use a PH triple zero to take that one out. That is a coarse thread. Yes, very coarse thread. Right, now that should be relatively loose, which it is. So if I give this a little bit of upward motion, it pops the connector loose from the DMD board. And let's see if I can move it forward. I just want to move forward a little bit so we can clear that metal. Disconnect that wire. Yeah. Let's see if I could just roll it over. I really don't like unplugging connectors if we can help it. It's, um, you know, every time you unplug one, you're putting a little bit extra stress on it. I guess you could say I'm putting stress on it like this too, but with them all together, I figure it's distributing the stress evenly. Alright, that's loose, and then we have one more screw. Make sure you guys can see that right down in that hole there. Yes, it's Phillips, so I shouldn't try and do it with a flathead. There we are. I broke it loose with the flathead and took it out with the Phillips, and it is a helical Phillips with the pan head. So helical Phillips with pan head goes back in here. Now this can come up. Need to get that one wire out that was coming up to the speaker. Come on. Because the ballast is also connected through here. This is the audio amp. So I need to unplug that. We have temperature sensors. We're going to leave those and leave the ballast control in place because, again, all we have to do is take this out. That actually might get a little complicated. So let's see. You know what? Uh, let's unplug the ballast control. 
and the lamp output. And I can just set it there. Oh yeah, that's actually not bad. I like that. Because the main board, plug Mr. Color Wheel. There we go. See, I need to take out that screw because we need to separate that metal assembly from this. So flat topped with a star washer. That'll go back in there. And that should, yeah. So now those two pieces are separated and we can take out the uh, three screws, two screws, three screws, holding in the optic module. Those I'm actually going to put in the lens cap because I don't want to let those get mixed up with the other ones. And they actually got warm as I took them out, rubbing on that plastic. Uh, and then we have a temperature sensor. Let's let's just take that out so that wire is free. And we're gonna actually put that screw for the temperature sensor, just kind of half start it so I don't mix it up. So now I should be able to what we wanted to get out is this piece right here. There's the color wheel. It's in very good shape. The whole thing is in good shape. Except for the DMD. So we're just going to set it face down and let's replace that DMD. This isn't too hard. There's four screws going around the outside and those screws are going through a spring clip Let's just get them all loose. I'll make this easier and then I'm going to take them out in a diagonal way so that the spring clip kind of pops up evenly. You'll see what I mean. See the one side's up now. Just keep my hand on the back so it doesn't go flying around on me. Alright, there's all four. Now I should be able to lift the heat sink off. Yep. Here we are. There's the heat sink. That's the heat pad that's supposed to help keep the DMD cool. But I don't know how well it did that. 1076, 6319, 1076. 6329. Well, let's see. Let's make sure they're the right DMD. Let's pop it out. Oh, I can even see where it delaminated. Wow. You guys see that corner? Wait, okay, if I can get it. There you are. Right there. That's the one side with the problem. If we turn it the other way. There you go. Now you can see it. So that's the problem. Now, what I'm not sure, though, if those are compatible. I think they are. I think I've been down this road before. I just get so many of these numbers in my head, you know. But one of the ways I check, you know, a cursory way, it's not like a perfect way to do it, is get calipers or get something that you can measure relatively accurately with and then just kind of size it to about the width of the opening, you know, the screen here, of the silver part takes a little, you know, figuring on your own, but we got about 11 and a half that way. And then, what, nine? Maybe nine millimeters this way. So then on this one, we should also get, yeah, oops, get you guys in frame here, about nine millimeters that way. And then was it 11 and a half? 
Yeah, seems pretty close. We're gonna try it. It's probably fine. Like I said, there's many model numbers that are all cross compatible, so there's no reason to uh, worry too much. And then to get this out, get your finger on the back, support the board, just give it a little push, and then pops out. And then we will get the new one, being sure not to touch the face of it. Let's give the the pins a once over, make sure the pins are straight, nothing's bent. I don't like that rust, but I'm going to leave well enough alone for now. I don't want to introduce a problem that's not really there. So we'll just set that back on the pins. You can see there's a spot that lines up right there. So we'll just do that. Push down. Now that's in. Set that back in place. And then we're going to get ready to put this back on, but I'm going to cheat just a tiny bit. I know some people don't like doing this, but I don't think it can't be a bad thing. Just a very tiny amount of heat sink compound to help bridge the connection between that pad and the DMD. You notice I just put a tiny bit, just enough to get some thermal transfer through, and that should protect this for the future. And we're just going to line that back up and it'll just drop in like that, and I can feel it pushing down on that heat sink paste. We get our screwdriver, and the same thing, we're going to start them diagonal from each other keep everything from shifting around. I'm just going to bring those down until they snug up a little, till that spring starts to take some tension. Here we are. And this one. And then this one. And then once I feel like everything is in place, which it seems like it is, one wasn't. Now it is. Then I'm going to start tightening these. So we'll get it down till it stops. A tiny bit more. And this side stops. A tiny bit more. These will strip out. So don't go crazy. Don't use the uh, screw gun. Bring them down until they stop and then a little bit more. You want those star washers to do their job. And that should do it. That should be ready to go. I'm going to put the uh, old one in here. And put that off to the side. And let's get the projector back and we'll put that back in. Now to put this back in, it's a little, little finicky. Just a little bit because we have to make sure we have our wires in the right spot. These wires, those wires, this thing here, the uh, color wheel wires kind of need to go under. So it's like down and over. So I should be able to just bring this down. Side's good. Let's see. Here we are. Make sure that lines back up. Yeah. That's actually not bad at all. I'm very happy with that. Will this line up? Let's see if. Uh... Yeah. Like that. All right. And then the clip the bottom, pull that. Like that. Now there is a small, let me zoom you guys in, there is a small metal tab at the bottom. Now you can see it. 
right here, that little metal tab has to go through the slot on the bottom of the metal or the pin won't drop in on that side. So pay careful attention to that when you put it back together. Now we can put the optical assembly screws back in. I'm going to do those by hand. He could do it. He could do it with a screw gun, but I don't want to take a chance with the plastic. So we'll get it started. So we we'll get it started, and then get back until I feel it drop like that, and then it just spins in real easy. There's one. This one, same thing, I put it in and I go backwards until I feel it drop. Right there. And you can really feel the difference if this was cutting the plastic thread so it would, you'd feel it. It's very, you know, not very difficult, but noticeably more difficult. Let's see, then, yep, that one's good. Those are in. Let's do the uh, temp sensor. Tell you what, these chassis are gold mined for parts. If uh, you need like thermistors and stuff, I always, when I scrap these down, I save them. Alright, so now that's over there. That's off to the side. That won't block the lamp assembly. We need to put this screw back in that goes through here and now I'm just going to come through with a longer Phillips and with the, oops, with the flat top screw with the star washer that goes through this black black plastic and that pinches that metal assembly and everything else together. I'm just going to give a little tug on these so that they're ready to um, plug back into the main board once I put that back in place. Then we're going to reinstall that. Actually, no, wait, we're going to. Oh, that fan actually looks great. Um, I don't think we're going to do anything to that fan. I'm gonna get a, some canned air here and let's see if we get, oops, we get the top of the canned air can coming off because it wasn't tight. Yeah, no dust. All right, not gonna do anything to that fan. Perfectly happy. Let's get to reinstalling that metal frame. So we'll take this. That wire will be ready for the main board lamp connector. You can see this has a 230 watt ballast by Osram. Plug that in. Power factor correction power and then don't forget that that small wire I unplugged because that is the power for the uh, audio amp. This wire right here that has to go to that um, speaker board. I'm sorry, I think it's 12 volts or something. All right, then we can set this back down. Those will help line it up. Kind of keep an eye on your wires, make sure nothing's getting pinched or caught. And then we want to make sure that hole lines up. And that was the coarse thread, pan head, this one, that's this screw right here that holds that in. And then again, it's a plastic thread, so come on, there it is, didn't really make a noise, it just kind of dropped in. Alright, that's down have that little itty bitty screw that goes here. It's weird, like they have these little, 
like mini screws in odd places. I, I don't know why. Alright, then I want to run I want to run that speaker wire up through the tape. Let's see if I can get that tape out of the way. Here we go. Speakers plug back in, and that'll go to the uh, main board. That'll go uh, here or something. Alright, so now let's plug the, uh, set the main board back in. get the board set down so we have it pushed back lining up with the screws and then I'm over top of the connector Let's get a little push drops down in place now to secure it there are two of the star washer screws which will go here and they go without the metal piece being in place so I can put them in now then we'll reconnect the wires hopefully I have the wires on the right spot and then we'll put the metal on and then we'll try it with the top off so let's reconnect the ballast wire that's ballast control let's tuck that fan wire back down let's get Mr. Color Wheel back over here like that's yeah that got underneath the uh, temp sensor that goes in connector side up or contact side up most of the time they go in other ones contact side down and that goes in there this is all temperature sensor stuff, just making sure it's all tucked in and out of the way. We have the IR, front IR goes here, and then audio out to the amplifier section goes there. And of course we have our door switch. Now again, a common failure on these is that little metal tab getting knocked off, so remember that. Don't need to worry about that here, but that does happen. So those are down, that's in. Uh, I think that's it. I think we are good. This is for programming something. I don't have to worry about that connector. So let's get the lamp. Let's get the lamp assembly. Get that in view so you guys can see it. You can kind of see how it works. It drops down and those alignment pins go through the hole like that. And we can snug these screws down. Now, try not to over tighten these. Like, literally take these down just until they stop. That magnesium or whatever that white metal frame is made out of will strip out very easily and when they get hot sometimes it'll actually cause them to corrode then on the back this metal thing is actually blocks light it lets the air go through but keeps the light from leaking out the side spinner back around because I want to put the uh, metal on the back We don't need it for testing. I just feel better having it there. I'm going to tuck that speaker wire underneath. Should just 
kind of slide on top. Good, I like that. Now we, again, we will get the the flat top Phillips with the star washers. There's three of those. Remember, all three went on here. Now you can get away with mixing up a few of the screws as long as you don't have the uh, lengths or thread types mixed up but you really want to try and put the uh, proper screws back in where they came out of if you can help it. Alright, that's down. That's down. That's down. Then in the back. This one again. Goes here. Then a flat faced Phillips with no star washer holds the HDMI port in. And this plastic fella down here. Alright. Now while we're while we're here, actually I'm gonna stop here. I'm not gonna put more screws in. But we could, um, I could probably put these back in, but I just want to try it first and make sure the DMD that was sent along is okay. So let me get this set up so that we can watch it on the screen. All right, I have a little piece of uh, clip holding the door switch in place. We are on standby. Power button is right here. I'll slide it back and we'll keep an eye on the wall. Color wheel spun off, lamp ignited, fans are running. We should see something up here in a moment. There we are. No specs, no little dancing stars. Let's see if I can. You know, I can sometimes get this to work where you can see it without that. But actually, this is good. That's good. Actually, this is very good. Uh, I don't see any problems here. I'm just trying to get it a little sharper, but uh, just a little close. But that looks beautiful. DMD is good. Focus is good, alignment's good, no dust blobs, anything like that. I'm, I'm happy. Um, let me shut it down, and then we'll finish reassembly. Alright, while it's cooling down, I can start putting the... putting the, the sub-D connector fasteners back in, or at least get them started. I do want to make sure it cools down all the way, especially with the new DMD. We don't want to uh, short cycle the cooling and cause us problems. That would be bad. And I don't know if this just counts down, you know, runs it for two minutes or whatever, three minutes, or if it actually monitors the temperature somewhere. It always seems to run for about the same time, but probably is usually always about the same temperature, too. So let's plug that. Take my little clip out. And... and the reason I'm doing this by hand or this way is these will snap very easily if you over tighten them. They're not really meant to be super strong. They're just holding, you know, VGA connectors. So I just do it by hand and then that way I can't over torque it accidentally. 
I have strong fingers, but not that strong. There we are. All right, next, we're gonna have the two screws that go out here that hold the back on, but that'll be after the top cover goes on. So let's get Mr. Top Cover. I'm gonna set both, uh, well, you guys can't see that. I'm gonna set both of these straight up and down so that they slide into their position when I drop this back on. It really should just kind of drop down. You shouldn't have to force it. It should just go down and it's okay to have the lamp assembly in in this case because the uh, case actually helps hold the lamp assembly in. So then I'm gonna flip it over. I still have it on the phone because again, this thing is just in gorgeous condition. I don't want to take a chance and scratch it. So I'm gonna put the uh, middle screw in first. thread inserts in these, but I wish they would. You know, put these kind of things in for all these and then use sheet metals or um, uh, machine screws. That'd be cool. Some higher end projectors do that. But I guess they figure these really shouldn't be opened up anytime, you know, except for like warranty repairs and stuff. three screws left over once we uh, get the back, get all these bottom ones in, and all three of those are for the back. I mean, two for the RCA plugs, or I'm sorry, four screws for the back, two for the RCA plugs, and then two for holding the uh, back panel. good. Let's put the uh, lamp door on. Now, just as an aside, when you put the lamp door on, you have to pay attention to the slot right here. That slot corresponds with that foot. And that foot goes, oh, wait, here we are. That foot goes through the slot and then slides back. Like, pretend my spudger here is the uh, plastic. And what happens is that slides back, it then hits that little metal tab on the switch. So a lot of people make a mistake of putting the cover on back here, or like going like this, and then hinging it down. And you can knock that little metal piece off, and you know, best case scenario, the little metal piece falls into the bottom and you know, your projector just doesn't come on and it flashes the light. Uh, worst case scenario, that little metal piece pops off, falls in the power supply or the main board, and, you know, bad things will happen. So what you really want to do is when you put the door on start, go to the very front like this. Say so, hey, it's as far forward as it'll go and still drop in and then go back. I don't know if you guys can hear that with the air conditioner, but that's the door switch. So you want to make sure that the door is properly seated. So then we'll snug that screw in, not super tight, just until it stops. And then we put this little thingy, this little uh, blank back on. That only fits one way, has a little notch. A little notch goes on the bottom. That allows you to get a screwdriver or something in there, or a fingernail to pop it off. So that's good. Bottom is good. Now we just have to put the back on. I'll take the back piece. It has these which correspond with those. So you just kind of roll it in like that. You don't want to put this on before you put the top on because I don't even know if you'll be able to. 
So it goes on, comes off first, goes on last. And then we put these two flat Phillips machine screws in. There and there. And then the last two screws These two. And again, that's a plastic thread, so I'm going to spin them backwards until I feel it drop in. It's a, uh, a pet peeve of mine, I guess. And if you can do it, try to put all the screws the same way. Have our lens cap which I will just set on top for the moment because the very last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to fire it up one more time with the top on then I'm going to shut it down and take it over to the other side uh, where we'll put a signal through it and then uh, we can call it good from there so let's see it's coming on hopefully we still have a picture and no sparkly bits from a bad DMD and it doesn't look that way. Again, I'm not going to probably be able to get it focused too well right here. Yeah, probably not. But again, no specs, no sparkles, etc. So can't turn it off yet. See that little, oh, no you don't, that little no fella up in the corner, it has to uh, boot up a little more. Yeah, no, all right, well, I'm going to meet you guys in a moment over at the other test area. And now we are firing it up over in the test area, I should be able to get a much better picture for us to look at over here, oh yeah, let's, uh, spin you guys around so you can see there we go and um, please forgive the uh, lack of aiming it's just pointing up a little higher than I expected there is the uh, Raspberry Pi let's see if we can refresh the uh, video here and see what we have going on And here we go. We have uh, YouTube coming up. I'll focus in on the lower screen. Well, can I get that? Let's see. Is that other feet? Can we get it down? Yeah, a little bit. A little better, a little better. Enough for uh, enough for our purposes, at least. I just need to run a video through it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick a video. I'll grab this uh, Lo-Fi Hip Hop Radio. This is always a nice, easy video to run. This or the uh, Fireplace video that I like. So let's get this up on the screen. All right. So now it's running. Huh. We have sound. I guess those speakers are uh, a thing. I'll mute it for this in case I have any copyright issues. But I'm going to let this run. Uh, picture looks great. I don't see any sparkles or speckles or any other visual abnormalities. Um, I'm going to let this cook for a little while. And as long as it holds up and the picture doesn't change, then I'm going to call this good to go. Uh, I don't see why it would have a problem. I mean, it's uh, the company uh, Tech Swamp is where the DMD came from. They're a good recycler company, so I uh, I don't expect any issues with that DMD. So that'll do it. I've been running this for about two hours now. No issues. Never cut out once. Picture stayed great. I'm going to shut it down uh, in about another 20 minutes and then get it packed up and sent back to the owner. So uh, if you have questions about your Mitsubishi 
XD280U or, you know, really any DLP projector, stick it down in the comments. Um, if uh, you have any suggestions on projectors you want to see, also stick that down in the comments. And if you need a lamp for this one, same place, comments, and there's a uh, coupon code if you want to use it, save you a couple bucks, you know. Um, if you don't subscribe, think about it. You know, I, I hate doing that, but saying this for some reason it actually works. Uh, you know, go figure. But more importantly, thank you for watching.